Good morning, here we are, Paloma Street at uh, Wavell Heights again. Monday morning, oh, nearly Monday lunchtime. Uh, at, uh, yeah, Monday the 19th it is, that's it. Monday the 19th of July. And we're almost done. Okay, we just got most of the steel beams up. We've got one more steel beam to go. Braces are in. Uh, so we've got four, four sets of temporary braces. And we put those just above our tar level. Our tar level is worked out at 2.6 down from the bearer. And the slab is about 2.7. So we want to stay above the tar, uh, above the slab once again. So the uh, concreters can get their uh, machines and uh, trowels in around the post. And here we are, the steel beams going in. Now, one of the things to let you know about as we do steel beams... Uh, I have an uncanny ability to walk in on a job and just change the plans when it comes to engineering because quite often the engineers are undersized or I feel they're undersized on the uh, steel beams as is uh, probably the case in this one. This one according to the plan the engineer allowed for a 200 C channel, 200 PFC. Now because of the weight of the house and the uh, load I found uh, as we raised the house I changed that to a 250 okay I know it's only a four and a half metre span but all these other spans that are coming off it okay uh, the the point load that, I, that we have up here let me turn around on this bearer and you'll see we have a point load there we've got three bearers coming in joining onto that steel beam there and this particular bearer there are no posts, no nothing. It's a huge beam. And uh, there's a lot of weight on that particular corner just there. And so to take that, I thought a 250C channel was just a little bit too light, which I'm almost certain of because of the amount of weight we've got up there holding these 250s up. Uh, and they're, they're having trouble uh, not bending, taking this weight. So uh, yeah, 250 would have really been a problem. Uh, on that, the same with over here. We have a, that was a 200 PFC that's supposed to go up at the front there. That's four meters. Uh, 200 PFC normally would take that, but we've got a 250 PFC coming off this, six meters long, holding up the floor, and that would make that 250 bounce a little too much. So uh, I made that a 250. Uh, like I say, I have a bad habit of changing the steels. We always upsize. I think I've only downsized once in my whole life. Uh, but that was with engineer's approval. But when it comes to uh, doing the engineering or getting the uh, ordering steel beams for jobs, I do, in quite a few cases, upsize the steel. The reason why is that I have uh, probably far more experience on the job uh, with uh, weights. Uh, and know what steel beam will do. Like the engineer, uh, they're good. They have a, a book of tables that tells them what size steel will do the job. But of course, uh, they also have uh, a uh, leeway of uh, a tolerance level of how far the steel will bend over that meterage. Uh, where we're building a house, and the last thing we want is it to be like a trampoline upstairs. Uh, from the steel bending and bouncing as people walk across it. So there's one of the reasons when I see a uh, undersized, or I feel undersized piece of steel on the plans, I will actually take it up the next size up. Quite often I do that when I quote the job. So uh, I've already gone up a size. <coughs> Pardon me. All the dust under the house. Uh, so uh, sometimes I don't win the job because I'm a little bit more expensive than the next guy because I've upsized the steel. And of course, when they get the uh, cheaper guy in, uh, he puts the steel on that's on the engineering, and then they can whinge and whine why they've got a bouncy floor at the end of it. That's easily understood. The guys aren't willing to change, to upsize it uh, to a stronger piece of steel. They say, well, the engineer shouldn't know what he's doing. And yes, he does know what he's doing in most cases, but he also has on the plans at all measurements and uh, decisions to be made on site. Okay, it's not, not something that uh, 
they uh, say is concrete. It is up to the individuals who actually do the job as to what they feel they should be putting in there. As long as they got a minimum of what the engineer has on site, uh, there isn't a problem. Uh, same with architects. Uh, we have a similar problem that architects uh, have on their plans and you'll notice if you uh, do houses that all measurements to be confirmed on site. Uh, this house uh, we have found is 100 mil bigger than what's on the plan. Now that is quite common, sometimes up to 600 mil bigger than what's on the plan and that's because uh, most architects uh, and draftsmen don't actually come out to the house and measure it before they do the plans. They take it off some other plan somewhere and they haven't actually measured the house or if they did they didn't do a very good job of it. Uh, it is quite common, uh, don't feel it's uh, out of the ordinary, it's almost every single job I've done over 25, well 30 years now, uh, I don't think too many of them have been correct. Different when you're building a brand new house, you're starting on the ground, you're doing exactly as per plan. But when it comes to the older houses we're renovating, building it underneath, up and under jobs, uh, I haven't found too many plans that are actually accurate to the house, where they've actually measured the house correctly and had it right. As I say, this one here is at least 100 mil out. Uh, as we found, is putting the steels in, because I did... Uh, on a rare occasion, on this particular occasion, I measured the steel and took it roughly off the plan, allowing a couple of mil, uh, which means that we've had a couple of pieces of steel where we've had to lengthen, like this one here, where we actually got to lengthen it by 100 mil, because on the plan it says it's 6 metres, uh, the other side is 4.5, and, a half, and uh, yeah, that's what it says on the plan, but the the uh, house is actually 100 mil longer than what it's on the plan, so I'm now 100 mil short on this piece of steel. So, yep, another job to weld. So we bevel the edges, get it ready for the welder to weld that together, and no problems at all. We then have an engineer come through and approve it all at the end. So we get our Form 16 certificates, which we've already had done on the uh, post holes. And now we just got to get done as soon as we finish the steel. We get uh, Peter again from Crichton Engineering to come in and uh, give us a Form 16 on the uh, steel and welding. Uh, don't know if you can see there. Once again, Cameron's doing the welding as per usual. And nice 15 plus mil fillets. So they're nice and strong and won't break. So, yep, that's what we're doing here. And this is... Uh, it was my last day here and Cameron's probably got another half day just welding uh, later on during the week as he goes up to another job tomorrow to do some welding on another site for Tony but uh, that's what we're doing here so I uh, hope you enjoyed that and I uh, hope it gave you some uh, useful information but uh, yes uh, quite often as I said we do upsize our steels to try and minimize bounce in the floors as I feel some of these steel beams that the engineers have on the plans uh, are a little bit light and uh, yeah I can show you that in quite a few plans so always double check, triple check what you're doing and if by chance the uh, stumpers do say you should need a, should do a bigger piece of steel yeah in most cases I'd agree with them it's uh, some of the steel some of the engineers are doing is just a bit light for putting under a house anyway guys take care have fun uh, talk to you again soon. See ya.